The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Paulina Lovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this introductory session of the process engineering class. I am Tetron Shimi Jogami, chemical engineering teacher. Today we are going to work on the process engineering course for from six students of the cosmetic pharmacy pharmaceutical speciality. So the general content of this presentation is as follows. We're going to have a general presentation of the program, objective and target skills, then three requirements. Process engineering course for, from six students is made up of 12 topics. And these 12 topics will be presented to you as follows. The first topic will be made up of three presentations. The second, that will deal with mixing with operation, will, will be made up of two presentations. Technology of transport has will take five presentations. Water treatment will take four. Technology of separators, seven. Process flow diagrams, three. Particle size reduction, two. Paper and textile production, two. Production of, of agro food, mixtures and separation, bioproduct production, and heating processes. Generally, at the end of this session, at the end of all the lessons, you should be able to draw process flow diagrams and to understand the technology of processes used in chemical industry. As prerequisites, for a better understanding of this course, you will need your notions on technical drawing, the notion on the state of matter, the notion of the transmission of matter, and the notion of unit operation that you saw in the previous class, that is in Form 5. Let's look at the first topic, that, will, that is an introduction to processes. This first topic will be divided in the following subtopics. Process flow charts, symbol used in process diagrams, and uh, those are the topics that we are going to work on in the, in the minutes to come. So, if we move directly to the lesson of the day, that will deal with the notion of process flow charts. This lesson will be presented according to the following outline. Objectives followed by prerequisite, problem statement, learning activities, summary, application exercise, and homework. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the type of process flow diagrams, to identify the various steps in a process, and to draw a process flow diagram, particularly a block diagram. You will need your notion on unit operations that we saw in Form 5 for a better understanding of all the notions that will be developed during this lesson. A chemical technician wish to establish a tomato paste production factory. And to establish that production factory, he needs to describe 
all the transformation processes by means of schematical representation. And also, he needs to do that schematical representation to perform a certain financial study to know what is the quantity, what is the, the budget needed to realize such a production. We know that from the various operations that we do at home, production of tomato paste can involve several operations like cooking, washing, packaging, cutting, storage, and grinding. But these operations, they are not in order. Those are several operations that we know they might take place in such a process. You are asked to describe the whole of each step in the preparation of the tomato paste. To identify these steps and to draw a block diagram for the preparation of the corresponding tomato paste. Before we continue, let's look at what we call process flowcharts. Process flowcharts are representation of processes that we use in chemical industry to communicate amongst engineers. And those process flowcharts are graphical representation and they are used to solve specific problems. When I want to establish a process, for example, the first thing I need to do is to draw a, a flowchart. Because in engineering environment, it is with a flowchart that I communicate with all the engineers, either in my locality or in different locality. That is why we say it is used to facilitate the communication between engineers. Process flowcharts are used to draw the diagram from a process description. So what we are aiming to achieve with process flowchart at the end of this course, you should be able to draw the diagram of a process from the description. That is, when you have the description, you should come out with the block diagram. Or vice versa, you should be able to come out with the description of a process from a corresponding flowchart. Various types of processes, of process flowcharts, are used in chemical industry. Basically, there are three. We have the first one, which is the block diagram, the second one, which is the process flow diagram, and the third one, which is the process and instrumentation diagram. As we move from block diagram to the process and instrumentation diagram, the diagram is more complicated and it has all the information that are required for better understanding of the process. If we look at the first one, which is the block diagram, as the name says, block diagram, it is made up of blocks. That is, unit operations in block diagrams are represented by rectangles. We have rectangles that represent the unit operation and material flow in and out from those rectangles. Those rectangles are interconnected in an orderly manner with arrows that, trans that shows the flow of matter from one unit operation to another unit operation. In this diagram, we see unit operations only. Elements Secondary equipment like pumps, valves, and control equipment like flow controllers, pressure controllers are not visible in such a diagram. In this diagram, as we said, we represent the unit operation in blocks, that's the first thing. And each unit operation is linked by an arrow, and reagents are either in circles or they are not framed at all. So a unit operation, we have unit operation in blocks for block diagram, and reagent may be in circle or they are not framed at all. Let's look at this example. This is an example of block diagram. When you look at this example, we have extraction, which is a unit operation. We have here separation, it's a unit operation. We have distillation, it's a unit operation. They are in blocks. Why raw mat material exam is not framed, as we say, we can frame or not, and the distillate here, which is the final product, is also a region. It is cycle. 
So other thing to note on block diagram is that material enters generally from the, at the left of the, the, the process and goes out at the right. So it is not suitable to come here and put a, I cannot come and put exam here. Okay? Generally, we want material to enter at the left of the equipment and goes out at the right. And if we have gaseous products in such diagrams, gaseous products leave operation at the top, while liquid products leave at the bottom. That is what we must note as far as block diagrams are concerned. The second case is the case of process flow diagrams. Process flow diagrams, in, uh, by comparing with block diagrams, in this case, we don't have blocks in process flow diagram. Process flow diagram give a process overview, and the piping are limited to the main connection between the appliances. In process flow diagram, you have the layout of equipment on the plan. Process flow diagram shows symbols of the main equipment that we use. Because generally, the equipment that we use in chemical industry, they have particular symbols. They, can be, they are represented by symbols. In process flow diagram, we don't we not more put the rectangle, but we put the conventional pictorial representation of the equipment on the diagram. And elements like valves and pumps, which are not visible on a block diagram, are visible on a process flow diagram. And what is the link between the process flow diagram and the block diagram? Generally, when you have a process description, before you perform a process flow diagram, you start with the block diagram. And it's by reading the block diagram, and by seeing the link between the various equipment that we can draw the process flow diagram and including valves, pumps, expanders, where need is. This is an example of process flow diagram. You see that in this diagram, we don't have rectangles. We have particular shapes like this, V101. It has a particular shape. It represents a particular equipment that we are going to see in the next lesson. Like this equipment, E101, this is the, the shape. It represents a particular equipment. This other equipment, H101, it represents a particular equipment. So in process flow diagram, equipment are represented by their conventional pictorial representation. And we have other secondary equipment like pumps, in this case, this is a case of a pump, like valve, here you have a control valve, okay? So that is a process flow diagram. The third diagram that we generally encounter, and this is the diagram that we mostly encounter in chemical industry, it is the process and instrumentation diagram. The process and instrumentation diagram contains piping and instrumentation. When we talk about instrumentation here, we refer to all the elements required to control the process and to assure that the process is secured. And this instrument, instrumentation are generally control, control equipment, like flow controller to control the flow rate, like pressure controller to control the pressure, temperature controller, level controller, and this type of diagram contains what we call control loops, which are used to make sure process parameters are controlled and the production is safe. It is a more precise and more comprehensive, and this is the type of diagram that we generally see in industries. So a process and instrumentation diagram is a process flow diagram with the various control loops necessary to control the parameters of that process. And this process, as we said, it has the control loops, the fitting, the, all the operating data, data of the equipment, the dimension, their positioning, and even 
insulation and heating data. The figure below is an example of process and instrumentation diagram. This is a process and instrumentation diagram of part of a plan. It concerns only the, this is a, an absorber, a packed, a packed column. In this packed column, you can have a reaction, okay? Or you can have a separation, it depends. So here you see all these elements. L, I, C, for example. It means level, indicator, and controller. And this is a loop. It's used to control the level in this tank. This also is another loop. This is another loop used to control temperature and indicator controller. Used to control the temperature. Here we have flow indicator and controller used to control the flow rate. So in process and flow diagram, process and instrumentation diagram is a process flow diagram with all the control elements. If we have summarized rapidly what we just said, in chemical industry, process flow chart are used to ease the communication between various engineers. They are used to solve problems like when I want to establish a new production plan, I start by the flow chart to have the idea of the various equipment that I will use in my production. And that will help to perform a financial analysis. We said we distinguish, we dis can distinguish three types of diagram. The block diagram. This block diagram, we said it shows only the unit operations, and these unit operations are in rectangles. That was the case of block diagram unit operation which are represented in rectangles secondly all those unit operations are interconnected in a sequential order so the main steps of all the process they are interconnected in a sequential order then on those diagrams we can see the inputs and the outputs the main input and the output. The utility, utility streams. When we talk about utility streams, we refer to streams like uh, water vapor, streams that are water vapor, for example, used to heat in processes. Streams like vent gases, they are not present in a block diagram. In a block diagram, we see only the mainstream, that is, the main reagents and the main products. In this block diagram also, we then see secondary equipment like pumps, which are used to transport fluid, compressors, expanders, heat exchangers, all those equipment used either for heating, for transport of fluid, are not present on the block diagram. The fluid flow diagram that we also call the process flow diagram, it indicates the layout of the equipment used using standard diagram, which are normalized in the fluid flow diagram, that is the process, the process flow diagram. Here we don't represent processes with rectangles anymore. Each unit operation has its conventional representation. That is what we use in process flow diagrams. And in these process flow diagrams, equipment like pumps, compressors, expanders are represented. And the relation that exists between these two is that to draw a good process flow diagram, you must start by drawing the corresponding block diagram to make sure you will not miss certain number of elements which are not present when you draw the block diagram. The next is the process and instrumentation diagram. We say this is the complete diagram that shows all the equipment used at the level of the various unit operations. It shows 
all the control elements used to control the process parameters with the various, con the various control loops used. Also, it shows all the safety elements, like pressure control valves, for example. That's a, safe that's a safety element. It also shows all the utility flow, the utility streams, like the water vapor stream that can be used for heating, like vent gases, like water that exit heat exchangers, cooling waters. Those are utility streams, which are not the main streams. We see all those streams on the process and instrumentation diagram. So if you go in a chemical industry, this is the diagram you are likely to see. Because generally in chemical industry, when you enter in the industry, there is a particular place where this process and instrumentation diagram are being placed to explain what, how the process works. If we go back to our application exercise, where the chemical, the chemical technician who wants to produce the tomato paste was asked to describe the process that he needs for that production, and by doing this, he could have a way out to establish his finance plan. The various steps that were given to you were cooking at 120 degrees, washing, packaging, cutting, storage, and grinding. So you were asked to describe the role of each of these steps in the preparation and to draw the corresponding block diagram. To do this, you simply, at this level, you need to look at your environment generally, if, even at your home, when your mother wants to cook stew. Because to obtain tomato paste is similar to the preparation of stew, but we don't put all the ingredients that our mothers used to put. So if you look at, if you take it at, with that point of view, you know that when your mother will buy tomatoes, the first thing to do will be to, to wash. To wash the tomatoes, to remove all the dirt on the tomatoes. After washing, what is the next step? After washing, it is cutting to reduce the, the size and ease the grinding. So we are going to wash the tomato. After washing, we will continue by cutting to reduce the size of the particle because it's particle reduction. After cutting, it will be grinding. We are going to grind to have an homogeneous paste. And that homogeneous paste is rich in water. The next step if you want to move from that homogeneous solution that we have when grinding to the paste that you want to concentrate, therefore the next step will be cooking at 120 degrees. Technically, this is heating in process industry at 120 degrees. And when that is done, you have your paste. And when you have your paste, what is the next thing to do? is to condition the paste. You need to put it in a container. That equation is called packaging. When you package it in good container, you can now store in a warehouse. So that is the analysis you can do. When you have, you are working, you are dealing with processes, you have to compare what happens if you take example in your environment. Because all what is done at industrial level, generally we do it at our laboratory scale or at home. And it is the same way of reasoning. Steps are arranged in the same logical manner, but they have been done in a bigger scale. We have arranged all the steps. You can see the, those are the, the, the role of each step. We have described already all the role. Cooking, we said, is to remove water. Washing to remove dirt on the surface of tomato. Packaging is to transfer the product in sterile container to avoid microbial contamination.
because we know it's an organic product. And uh, cutting to reduce the size, storage in the warehouse, in the warehouse, then crushing also is particle size reduction to have the juice of the corresponding fruit. So we have explained uh, the role of each, and uh, that is how we have classified and you understood well why we did the classification washing, cutting, grinding, heating, packaging, and storage. So those are the steps used to produce the tomato, the tomato paste. If we now draw the block diagram, we said operations are in blocks. Raw material enters at the left and goes out at the right if there are impurities. So for this case, we have tomatoes and water. Washing. Because when we say washing, it means we put in contact with water. That's why we put water, we put tomatoes. Wash. When we wash, what do we remove? Impurities. Because the, the impurity, that is the washing water that you are going to, to spill. That's impurities. Then next step, we cut. When we cut, we put in a mixer. We grind. We heat at 120 degrees. We package and the product is being stored. That is it. So it's block diagram is simple. Just have a little bit of common sense and uh, you cannot have serious difficulty when you deal with these diagrams. So to verify that you have acquired the knowledge, you will do this exercise at home. It concerns sub-production process. Fat and soda solution are introduced at the same time into a reactor in which saponification takes place at 120 degrees Celsius. After this, glycerin obtained is extracted at the bottom of the reactor. The resulting soap paste is then brought to boil during this process. A quantity of soda is added to ensure complete reaction of the fats. The resulting cooked paste is washed several times with brine to remove excess soda, oil, impurities. The paste obtained is allowed to rest and it is being washed with water to remove salt and to make the soap smoother. The smooth paste is then introduced into a mixer where perfume dye are added and the mixture is homogenized and transferred into a plodder to achieve a, uni a uniform texture of the bar soaps. The smooth paste, the bar soap obtained are then cut in, with a knife to obtain the soap cubes and the resulting soap cubes are stamped and dried. So from this, you should identify the different unit operations you presented in this process and draw a block diagram. For more knowledge on the topic, for more knowledge about various diagrams, you can consult the standard for the representation of this diagram, which is an ISO standard 10628. See you for the next lesson that will talk about symbol used in processes, process diagram part one. Una tege si matege yop, una tege minga matege nyum, una tege majang matege ndom, mane tambia niña ne injubiayen, gani bana matege mot, gani la kiri watege ndom, esoki na bia dinkido, mane tambia niña ne injubiayen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia niña ne injo bia yen 